All right, fellas, before we begin Aunt Sally's edition of part one of working on this ramp truck here, I just want to tell you guys what the game plan is. Number one, you can watch the uncensored version of this over at Patreon. It's a dollar a month. I mean, if it was up to me, guys, I I would charge a cent to watch it. But Patreon, the lowest you can do is a dollar a month. There's no tiers. Or number two, you can watch Aunt Sally's editions of my uh, moving pictures here on YouTube here. Or number three, you can hear my voice rumble still for free uncensored but it's not fair to the patreon so where my voice rumbles on basically you guys will be an episode behind the way it's going to work part one is uh ramp truck it's live on the patreon it's live on uh, aunt sally's edition here but you guys won't see the uncensored version of rumble until part two comes out for the patreons and aunt sally's edition here so if you uh if you guys want to see me rumble on over there Go check it out. Uh, I appreciate it again, fellas. Appreciate all the support. I really don't want to do what I'm having to do. I really wish we could just continue doing what we have been, but YouTube is just telling me you got to adapt or you're going to get left behind. So this is, uh, this is the way we got to do it. Here's Aunt Sally's edition of uh, part one of working on the ramp truck. Well, we meet again. Got the glorified Chevy hauler here today, aka the ramp truck. It's put in its duty, hauling all those uh, GM products out of Skidder's yard there. So now it's time to show this thing some love. See, that's what you do with a good vehicle. You know it's completely screwed, but it does the job anyways. It gets it all done, and then some. So instead of just continuously, uh, you know, beating the ever-loving hell out of it, Show some love, then beat the other love and hell out of us more, and then it'll take it. It'll say, oh, th thank you, sir, may I have another? What we're trying to do today, as you can see, I already ripped out the seats here, and that one I haven't, because it's uh, nuts and bolts instead of just a nut plate. So, yeah, that, you know, can't be in two places at once here. What we're doing here today, we're going to replace the uh, injector return lines here that you can see are just absolutely uh, leaking all over the motor here. Sorry, I'm at a loss of words. I'm trying not to swear so much because uh, YouTube definitely doesn't like me now. I'm trying to get the injector return lines done on this thing. And then the uh, right side exhaust manifold leaks too. Let's get that uh, nice gorgeous air cleaner off there and see what we got. Yeah. This is literally the first time I've actually had this air cleaner off of this thing. The lid uh, is missing. Well, the lid's not missing, but the uh, hardware that holds it down is missing. And uh, the lid was off of it when I first initially got it. So, yeah, that's uh, that's beautiful in there. Mind you, this thing sat since, I think it was 2000. Well, according to this, 2008 New Hampshire was uh, last time it was inspected. The guys bought it. There was no U-Haul cab on it. On the back anymore, it's just a frame, a cab and chassis is called. Put that ramp trailer on there. Seven trees already been replaced, along with the C6, it's already been replaced. So, really, was that 169,000 miles are on it? I mean, what got like 50, 100,000 miles on these two units, if that. So, but yeah, well, I've kind of realized about these seven trees, they're kind of like the four, Chevy four trees, where a lot of people are like, oh, they're junk, they fucking blow up, and then there's other people like me, they're like, oh, they're fucking awesome, they will run forever. Just, yeah, I guess it just really depends on what day the uh, motor was built, you know, you don't want a Friday unit, you don't want a Monday unit. Friday unit, the guy could care less, he's ready to party. Monday, he comes in hungover and he care less about it, so you kind of want like a Wednesday motor, maybe a Tuesday motor. Eh, she'll last. That's why this one built on a Tuesday or Wednesday. Same with that trans. We we bought the thing and just drove it two and a half hours, three hours straight back home. Ran great. And then just immediately put it to work once I reinforced the decking. So we're uh this is gonna be a surprise for both of us. And that is just that's beautiful right there. As you can see by all the nice puddles of diesel and the Soaked return lines here. This is uh, what I'm talking about. I've never done these, so we're uh, we're learning together here, folks. From what I'm gathering here, you just well, first you take the ice layers off, 
you want to definitely run those if not these lines are going to kind of be moving all around and uh they could crack and you know then you're gonna have, you're gonna have a bad time so take the isolators off first then we're going to take all these uh injection lines off and i guess without having to loosen the other side of the injection lines on the pump we're able to get these up just enough slide these things off these are made out of plastic and they like to break so the kit that you get comes with these new o-rings for these and then the new rubber line it also comes with or the copper uh gaskets there the crush gaskets for the injectors but you ain't got to take the injectors out to do this so just uh just set those aside for a rainy day so yeah let's get these isolators off go from there oh and by the way don't be caught dead hopefully you guys can see but uh the isolators it looks like it's uh 7 16 11 millimeter you know whichever one you want to go with ow all right now that the isolators are off time to take a wrench loosen these up this one here you're gonna need two wrenches because this one's got this i guess it's for timing come to find out Put something on there, I'll you know. Take the injector lines off. Uh, they should be a 5 8 16 millimeter. Crack them loose. You want to make sure the uh, nut spins freely from the line. If not, it's like a brake line. You spin it all and it's just going to shear off and. Going to have a bad time. It's unlike a brake line. You can't make these easily. I mean, I guess you can if you got the right tools, but I definitely don't. And they got to be the exact length. Every injection line needs to match the other's length or else it throws off the timing of the diesel injection, as seen by my Buick. With those three homemade injector lines on the front, they're longer than the back three, so the front three cylinders were actually uh, Joe Biden on timing. And I just dropped it on Why would I? There's just enough room to slide that uh, rubber jo or uh, plastic jobber off there. It's a lot easier on F-150 or uh, F-350 instead of an E-350, I'm sure. I don't know. Can you sit on a nice comfy seat like an F-350? I don't think so. Let's see, now you screw that guy off. Oh. Except the injector is loose from the cylinder head huh that's that's interesting all right so now all the injection lines are off this side here because it's already been uh messed with basically what i'm uh gonna say is leave it in one piece do it on the bench and then these all you gotta do is put a screwdriver under them and uh just work them up you don't want to replace those just because they're prone to breaking because they're made of plastic and they come in the fucking kit. These have been replaced once because this is like nylon tubing it looks like, but uh, you can see, I mean, everything's saturated. It's... If these ain't leaking, the O-rings are probably leaking or these are broken, cracked and, you know, just replace them all. There we go. Hey, I'm a mechanic. But yeah, see, they just slide right up and then there's... Not one, but two O-rings here and then here, and uh, they're pretty flat. So I'm gonna go ahead and say uh, that's part of the problem. Just slip it past the injector. So I'm gonna get the other two off, and then there's the uh, line right here. Barely see it. I think it runs the the return side of the pump. I gotta take that off. I'll show you guys uh, everything on the bench here. So right here is what the kit looks like when you got it or when you get it. Uh, I, I sprang for the Delphi kit instead of uh, the next cheaper one on Rock Auto. Delphi usually knows uh, fuel systems. There's the dummy. So this is what it looks like when you get it out of it. This end was connected to the fuel filter, not the injection pump. Uh, yeah, it was just a simple hose clamp goes around the fuel filter, easy as hell to get off, and then you just feed the whole thing out. I'm going to on the bench here make the kit because the kit also includes new rubber hose with it and you gotta cut it to fit. People online says uh, these are four inches. 
And then another guy says, uh, yeah, four inches minus a sixteenth of an inch. So basically you take the old ones off and cut the new hose to length. Really, you want a pair of duckbill pliers to get these pinch clamps off, but uh, a pair of vice grips will work too. Don't get bloody, cut towards your body. And the size you're up here. Note to self. Clamps included with the Delphi kit are absolutely awful. I've never had a pinch clamp fight me so bad in all my life. No matter which way I do it. Ow! I'm mutilated by the time I get it on there. Oh, there. Oh, Christ. Well, hint. Most people think uh, using like PB Blast or WD-40. I mean, yeah, I'd probably get it on there. Believe it or not. Shot of brake clean makes uh, rubber slide very easily. Don't know why. Just got limited working time with it. Yeah, see? So, what you're going to want to do for putting a clamp on there, make sure both of them will lay flat on the bench. Now, put the double clamp on. Alright, well. Here's one. Oh, well, there we go. Got the new one built. I just didn't cut a new long piece of line out of this yet. I want to get the other four done and see how much I got left to uh, actually use. So, should have enough, but who the f knows. Time to go put it back in the truck, more or less. Now that you uh, did the cups and the lines, don't forget to change the o rings while you're in here. It's pretty simple. Grab a screwdriver or pick. In this case, I probably want a pick, but I'm too lazy to get up and get one. You really are a fat bastard. I'm gonna go with some fucking dielectric grease. Cause they ain't got hurt a thing. Slide that guy into its home. Probably not. I can't see nothing. Everything's in my way. Oh my god. Come on. And there goes the GoPro. Boom, look at that, in the groove. Just look at that, that's how you do them. I'm not gonna show you the rest. All right, well, I lubed these all up. For, <laughs> forgot to press record, but I got them all in here. I guess when you're pushing these down, you'll kind of hear it like, hear or feel it kind of click. Yeah, like that. That's how you know you're all the way down. Yeah, right there, click. So now, we can put all the uh, injection lines back on. Basically, you got the return line up front that goes to the uh, filter housing. And then back here, you got this little guy that goes right there. All right, now, got to do the other side. Oh, and don't forget to put the fucking isolators back in. I got all the uh, cups back on. Yeah, all the lines ran. Just an FYI, this is about all you got left out of the uh, kit for hose. So, I mean, you got a little bit of room, but you can't go too crazy with it. But yeah, I got all the injectors loose. I'm gonna crank her over here. As you can tell, if you're a proficient in seven threes, I got at least three or more glow plugs or pieces in this thing. Just because of uh, how short a time this actually uh, stays lit to how long it uh, clicks. What we're going to do, crank it over, make sure we got fuel at the injectors, which we should, and uh, crank them down. Well, it looks like every one of them are wet, so I'm going to crank these injectors down and uh, get your fire down. Well, let's see if it starts well ether. You, sir, are an idiot. Oh, definitely found our uh, manifold leak. Yeah, gas gets blown right there we go.
machine like that. Oh, cool. And fixed. Oh, yeah. Really, not even that smoky. So there we go. We got all the return line cups replaced here, return lines replaced, not a drop to speak of. Um, little tech tip. Do not use vinyl line for fucking fuel line. It just doesn't work. But yeah, that's all fixed. Now we got the manifold to do. So we're going to pick that up tomorrow. Morning. Back at her here. New day. New flannel, same old dirty f***ing work pants. And in this corner, wearing the f***ing same old work pants he has on every time I see him. And uh, same old greasy f***ing caveman. Sam's a caveman and he's a d So, obviously we got the uh, injection lines, or uh, return lines done last night. But as you saw, that manifold is leaking. No sh And uh, gasket's blown out here. Went ahead, got a whole new manifold because it's pretty cheap. Um, obviously, it comes with a new uh, manifold gasket and the donuts built in. Has new studs in case those break. As you can see, it's uh, you know, really tight on this side. Kind of wishes the driver's side manifold is uh, there is way more room over here. When I start on this thing, I ain't gonna lie. You, last night I knew I couldn't sleep unless I uh, tried to loosen one of these and it loosened right up. So I'm hoping the rest are the same way. This next one here is a stud because I got the oil dipstick here. Yeah, let's get at her. So this one here and that one up there, they, uh, eh, I feel eh. Hopefully I can heat these up without burning down the truck. Light all the diesel that's been leaking everywhere on fire. It'd probably be a good idea, you know. Thank you. Dear eight pound, six ounce, newborn infant Jesus. We just thank you. Oof. Uh. See, it's not so much you're seized in the head, it's just you're getting seized to the manifold. And that was pretty close to and just snapping right off. Can't really use a bunch of heat because, well, you know, the truck will burn down probably. I ain't got a fire extinguisher. Kind of use those all up on uh, the. Uh, Bonneville Viking funeral there by accident and uh, haven't got them recharged since. Instead of uh, risking burning down the whole truck, I'm going to move to the air chisel. <clears throat> Basically, as I showed you, the shank of the bolt is rusting to the manifold itself, not so much in the head. So by hitting this with an air chisel here, I'm hoping to break up the rust so the bolt will just break free. We'll see how well it works. I kind of want to chisel and try to break the bolt free all at once, but there's not enough room here. doing the same thing but you can see threads are fine it's just rusting to the manifold well we got one two three four five out did your parents have any children that live sir yes sir how about they regret that three more to go well got all the bolts out i only snapped one absolute most fucking front one flange bolts loose here time to see if this can come out here Holy 
finally. Now I just gotta deal with that broken bolt. So all the fucking manifolds out, and as you can see, a couple of these bolts, especially that one, was about ready to break. And the one that broke, as you can see, look at the size of that hole versus that hole. This is the only centering hole on the whole manifold where it's smaller than the rest. But you can see, this one, you can see that one's supposed to be a big hole. It's all rusted up in there, and basically the bolt rusted to the manifold. I tried vibrating the out of it, but it didn't work because the bolt was just too far gone, so she snapped. Basically, uh, yeah, she was blowing out there. But as you can see, there's a crack starting right here. It's not leaking yet, but it's definitely not good. China Dorman manifold it is. So now it's time to get that bolt out. Got a few different ways of doing it. As long as one of them takes it out, I don't care. I got two nuts on, well, I would hope I have two nuts, but uh, I got two nuts threaded on to what's left of the bolt. I'm hoping to loosen the stud out of there by using the first nut being locked against the second one. If that doesn't work, I'll go on to welding the nut on. Hopefully I can do this. Well, you guys are, uh, oh, gonna totally block the view, you guys. So as you guys can see, the double nut method didn't work. We're up to the welding method now. And we'll see if I can even get in here to weld. I'm blind, sweet Jesus, I'm blind. So literally you want to try and strike while the iron's hot here. Want to see what success looks like? Right there, boys. Ended up welding that to the end. Ended up f***ing myself, so I ended up having to put an easy out on the thing. And, uh, yeah. She came out just barely. It's going to snap again right near the head. Yeah, then buy a lotto ticket. All right, so before you go slamming a new manifold home, well, hey, you want to... Make sure the dipstick tube's in so nothing goes down the crankcase. But B, you gotta clean off the gasket surface. I just use a wire wheel on the drill, see how far I get. Alright, well, with the wire wheel and extension on the on the thing, I was able to clean up the gasket surface pretty well. I mean I'm happy with it. Next up is that your new gasket here. I'm going to apply a light coat of uh, silicone on the back side of it, so it'll A, help seal, and B, hold the f***ing thing in place. That's the plan anyways, we'll f***ing see how, how well it works. Probably just going to be a big old f***ing disaster, look normal. Well, I mean it's kind of in there. Nope, oh, and I take that back. Sucker. So, okay, we'll slide in this thing here. All I remember was it was uh, fun to get the thing out. Getting up against the right tool. Ow! Hey, there we go. See? Easy. Feed this thing back behind here. Yeah, just drag it through all the grease. That's what you're going to want. Oh yeah, look at that. Brandy new grade 8 hardware. Spared no expense. We spared no expense. First six you can get from in here, last two you gotta get from uh, underneath the truck. Oh yeah, it's pooping hardware. All right, so got all the bolts in here. Now it's, uh, you know, time to torque these some down. Normally I could care less about torquing exhaust man full of bolts, especially nice 3 8 bolts like this, but being a diesel, it's gonna rattle, vibrate. Personally, I don't feel like doing this again, especially not anytime soon. I'm gonna torque them down to 30, and then I'm gonna go up to uh, what was it, 42 or 44 foot pounds for uh, grade eight, three eighths hardware. So obviously you're gonna wanna start with the center two bolts, which are gonna be these two right here and uh work your way out yeah nice snap on torque wrench but uh the batteries exploded in it and now i don't have a nice snap on torque wrench destroyed the thing yeah, 
Yeah, a better chance to see him in period, I think. Tell me I couldn't make this fucking dog house just a fucking hair bigger. Food stamp, garbage, fucking torque wrench. Just get on there. Holy f***. Gotta be a fucking torsionist working on this piece of shit. I love you, truck, but damn. Alright, well, this ain't gonna fucking work, so I'm gonna torque the ones I fucking can. And then the rest are gonna be uh, calibrated elbow type. Alright, well, we got all the fucking uh, bolts torqued down. The front five, you can put a torque wrench on. Front three there, you gotta do from underneath the truck and with uh, with just a regular ratchet. All I got left is uh, tuck that some bitch up. Well, look at the factory that uh, they gave me here. So that's the hardware they gave me, some studs, which the studs screw into the manifold, no problem. But uh, that's fine thread hardware. Guess what nuts they did not give me? Fine thread. So, what I'm going to do instead, I got some lug nuts here laying in my toolbox, and they'll do the job. Put a couple washers on there, a couple lock washers. Good to go. Before you ask, the uh, old hardware I took off was not fine thread either. So, always something to f*** you. I mean, I could go to the hardware store, but use what you got. And if you're wondering why I didn't send just 716 coarse bolts through there, I could have. What I like about studs is once they fing rust in with New York, say the nut doesn't want to come off, well, usually the stud likes to unscrew from the manifold then, so you can still get the fing exhaust off later on. Whereas a bolt, if it's stuck, it's probably just going to fing break, and that's the end of that. Then you're drilling and fing yelling and just fing off at life. So let me uh, torque these down with the calibrated elbow and. Next you'll see uh, this pig fire up. Alright, after much wrenching, losing a socket and everything, can't find it. Time to fire this up and see how bad it smokes. Well, I don't get no respect from anyone. When I called up suicide prevention, they tried to talk me into it. Not even that smoky. Well, there you have it, guys. Fucking exhaust manifolds fixed. No more clicky clack out of the engine compartment. That was fucking annoying. We solved the fucking uh, diesel leak here. What I wanted to do in this episode was uh, turn up the fuel on dang old injection pump there and adjust the fucking tr uh, transmission kick down because it's in third gear by 30 miles an hour. So that, uh, that screw right there. Yeah. That screw right there, I have a feeling if I turn it in some, uh, this will actually do something. See, when I floor it, it barely moves, and when I actually by hand, look how much, look how much more it's got out of it. So, yeah, the whole reason we ain't doing those two things this episode is because I wanted to, you know, take it for a test drive after I did that shit. But, unfortunately, there's a blizzard outside right now, and the snow's all coming just in a fucking hour now, and... It's gonna be snowing for the next four or five days. Well, I really want a fucking chassis saver this fucking thing, so I don't want to get it all fucking wet. Don't want to get cover all of fucking salt, so I'm just gonna hold off on that. That'll be the next video. Speaking about the next video, we're gonna be uh, redecking the back half of this fucking thing, so this thing, so this uh, decking stops bowing the fuck in, and we're gonna fix the fuel system the rest of the way. The unblock lift pump has been disabled. There's a clicky clack right there, but as we all know, clicky clacks are uh, push style pumps, not pull. Well, she's pulling fucking hard, boys. I bet you could suck a golf ball through a garden hose. She's a champ. So instead, we're gonna lo uh, relocate that back here at the gas tank. Get rid of all this bullshit here. Make it so it ain't putting air in the fuel system because I have a feeling it is. So on that note, fellas, I just want to. Go through a list of new Patreons here just from this last video. I appreciate the f*** out, guys, and uh, here we go. We got Mint Randy, Fiber Optics, at 785 boxes, Mark Kenders, Kenderis, I, I don't know, I'm f***ing stupid, sorry. Um, we got Devlin Hamster, 
Big Dino, Twone, Twan, I, I, I don't know. Again, I'm fucking stupid. T W O A N. This last one's pretty good. Robin Banks, and the guy's picture is a guy in a fucking ski, uh, ski mask. I appreciate it, fellas. Uh, appreciate the fuck out of it. I still blown away. But yeah, we're gonna have part two of this fucking ramp truck here. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed today's fucking video. And remember, don't put your fucking hands any place you want to put your fucking neck. Fuck you, YouTube.